Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be looking at how we can analyze the relationship between inputs and outputs in our models by using Monte Carlo simulation. This is part of our lecture segment on Monte Carlo simulation. So we've already covered an intro to Monte Carlo. We've run Monte Carlo on a model, and then we went through the formal introduction of what we're doing in Monte Carlo simulation. So now we're going to dig into how we can establish relationships and quantify the relationships between our inputs and outputs using Monte Carlo simulation. So we uh, Monte Carlo simulation is not the only tool that we can use to achieve this objective. We've already looked at sensitivity analysis, which can get at the same basic idea. What is the relationship between the inputs and the outputs? With sensitivity analysis, we're changing one or two inputs at once and seeing what happens to the output of our model with those changing input values. With Monte Carlo simulation, then we're, uh, running the model a bunch of different times with all these randomized inputs. And that allows us to get a more full picture of how the inputs relate to the outputs. Because when you change just one or two inputs at a time, you may be leaving out that when other inputs are at different values, these inputs that you're changing have different effects. Um, so thinking about the retirement model, when we're changing the interest rate and seeing how that changes our years to retirement, well, the interest rate is going to have a bigger impact on the model if the initial salary was higher to begin with. So you might, you know, thinking about this in advance, you might do a sensitivity analysis of interest rate versus the initial salary. So you can see how these two interplay together. Um, but you may not have thought about this relationship at the get-go, or there may be other relationships which matter as well. I mean, with a higher savings rate, also the interest rate is going to be more impactful. So uh, doing it the Monte Carlo simulation route to analyze the relationship, you're kind of bringing all these different relationships together and not having to explicitly think about them as the modeler. You just kind of throw everything in with random inputs and the simulation is going to reveal those relationships. <clears throat> so by changing all the inputs each time that you run the model, <clears throat> then you're going to get cases uh, with each different values of the inputs. So some cases you're going to have a high interest rate and within that, in some cases you're going to have a high salary, some cases you're going to have a low salary. Some uh, simulations, you're going to have a low interest rate. And within that, you're going to have some that have a high salary and some that have a low salary, as well as different values of the other inputs as well. So as long as you do enough simulations, a high enough number of iterations, then you're going to capture cases of all these different values of the inputs interplaying together. And that gives you a much more fuller picture of the relationship between the inputs and outputs. Now, the issue with this, with sensitivity analysis, it was fairly straightforward to understand uh, how we can just look at those results. We just see the result from the model. We can visualize it using conditional formatting uh, or a Hexman plot, and it's fairly straightforward. It's a little more complicated to take, okay, well, now we've got 10,000 uh, results from this model. How do we get an understanding of the relationship between the inputs and outputs. So I'll discuss two different approaches that we can use here to get an understanding. The first is by visualizing uh, via a scatter plot. So the scatter plot shows the relationship between two variables, one that gets plotted on the x-axis and one that gets plotted on the y-axis. And each point is the values of the X and the Y together. So this could be uh, looking at that 
uh, investment rate on the X and looking at years to retirement on the Y dimension. And you would say, well, one time I ran it and I had a 2.2% interest rate and I got uh, 22 years to retirement, uh, et cetera. And um, the, the disadvantage of scatter plots is that it only does look at one variable at a time. So you do have to have like one scatter plot for each variable. But um, then each graph is, is very focused on that variable. And so what you're looking for when you look at these scatter plots is you want to see some kind of pattern. Um, if the points are just kind of in a cloud, uh, as we see in the bottom picture here, there is no kind of linear or shape uh, in here. It's just kind of an ambiguous cloud. That is supportive of there not being a strong relationship between the variables. Whereas when the points seem to kind of fit along a line or like a U shape or some other kind of very defined shape, um, then that's evidence in support of there being a relationship between the two variables. So, um, as far as quantifying this, then we're going to look at regressions, multivariate regressions to accomplish that. The scatter plot just gives you a quick picture, a visualization uh, that you can quickly see the relationship and how the relationship changes throughout the range of the input. Um, but the multivariate regression is going to be able to give you quantitatively what is the impact of the input on the output. So that allows you to answer questions like, if I earned $10,000 more for my starting salary, how much sooner would I be able to retire? Uh, so of course, in order to answer that question, an easy attempt at it is to just go to your model inputs and increase the salary by 10,000 and see what happens to the year's retirement. That's kind of, that's you know basically the sensitivity analysis approach, um, but it is the simplistic way of looking at it it doesn't take into account how all the other inputs in the model could change. You're still just assuming that those other inputs are at their baseline values. So by doing the Monte Carlo simulation, we take into account all these cases of all the other inputs being at different values. So multivariate regression, basically we put whatever output we're trying to analyze as our Y variable and then each of our inputs as the X variables. And this will be able to tell us quantitatively what is the relationship, what's the strength, magnitude of the relationship and direction uh, between the input and the output. So the process or how you interpret the uh, results of that, as we run a multivariate regression, we get some fit statistics um, and then the part that really matters for this is the coefficients and the p-values. Um, and if the p-value is high, that's evidence of there not being a relationship. If it's low, then there is at least some relationship. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship is strong or even meaningful in your model, but it does mean that there is evidence that there is a relationship. And then you look at the coefficient to assess the strength or magnitude of that relationship. So the coefficient in multivariate regression is how much does the outcome variable change when there is a one unit increase in the input variable or X variable. So to give an example of that, say we're working still with this uh, retirement model, and you get a coefficient of negative 0 0.0002 on starting salary uh, when your retirement is your y variable. So what that means is a one unit increase in our x is associated with a negative 0 0.0002 unit increase or decrease in the y. Um, 
So our salary is in dollars. And so that means that's a $1 increase in salary. And then our year's retirement is in years. And so that's a $1 increase in salary associated with a decrease in years to retirement of 0 0.0002 years. Of course, that's not a, a, a nice way to interpret it, right? Like, who cares about a $1 increase in salary? That's not going to be a meaningful thing. Uh, but the nice thing about these uh, relationships is you can just multiply them up in order to get it in terms of something which is meaningful. So we can multiply both sides here by 10,000 to now change it into a $10,000 increase in salary is associated with a decrease in years to retirement by two years. So whenever you interpret the coefficients, you want to put them in terms of something which is meaningful for your model. No one cares about a $1 change in salary. How about a $10,000 change? And let's interpret it in that context. An important thing as you go to interpret the results from the regression, um, and this can definitely be a point of confusion, is that these coefficients are all, less, all else constant. So that means that this you know, $10,000 increase in salary decreases years to retirement by two years. That is not taking into account um, that you know, when you're able to earn more money, you're probably able to save more money as well. And so the savings rate is going to be higher for an individual who makes more money. That is not being captured in the coefficient. Now, a big reason that I've been saying we should use this approach rather than just sensitivity analysis is because it takes into account that all the other variables are changing. So that's where students can get confused by this. Um, because now here we're saying, oh, but we're basically treating all the other inputs as constant. Um, but it's even though we're kind of isolating the effect to this one uh, input with this coefficient, the regression model is still considering all these different cases of the input values. So you can kind of think of it as an average across, you know, thinking about um, starting salary. Uh, you can think of it as an average across, like sometimes the investment rate was high, sometimes the investment rate was low, sometimes the saving rate was high, sometimes the saving rate was low. Taking the average across all these different cases, what was the overall effect of just the uh, salary portion. So if you know that two inputs in your model are linked, as is the case uh, potentially here with starting salary and savings rate, you know that if you have a higher starting salary, you're going to have a higher savings rate. Then you can basically combine the coefficients and say, well, I know that when the salary goes up by 10,000, the savings rate is going to go up by 5%. And then you can add those two effects together to get the total effect on the years to retirement. So you can still use these regression results to get at the full relationship. It's just that each coefficient is interpreting just the effect of that variable. And another thing to be careful about here is the units. We already talked about you know, how this is a one unit increase and you're probably in a lot of cases going to need to adjust the units in order to get that to a meaningful number. Uh, and that's definitely the case when you think about decimals versus percentages. Uh, so, you know, we're always representing our investment returns in decimal format in our Python models. And a one unit change in decimal format is actually a 100% change. It's going from zero to one, which is zero to 100%. Um, and so the coefficient that you'll get for the investment rate or any other decimal, um, decimal number that is actually a percentage, um, then basically the coefficient is going to be much larger uh, it's going to be 100 times as large as the value would be for a 1% change. So you have to divide by 100 to get it to a 1% change. Um, and if you, you know, had things in percentages, it could go the other way around in the model. 
Um, and so you just need to be careful about the units and thinking through the coefficients and what makes sense to have everything in the proper units. So that's an overview of theoretically how and why we're going to analyze the relationship of inputs and outputs through Monte Carlo simulations. We'll come back next time to apply Monte Carlo simulation to the dynamic salary retirement model. And within that, we're going to see an example of how we can do all this analysis of relating inputs to outputs. So thanks for listening and see you next time.